All right, let's look at this inclined plane lab. So this is the, uh, the view that you would see as you go through and work on this lab. Um, and the very first uh, thing we're going to have to do for all of these videos is uh, convert the pixel distance to a physical distance. And each of the different videos does this in a slightly different way, which is kind of annoying, but there we are. Uh, for example, here we're told uh, the frame rate, number of frames per second, is going to be shown below. And the physical width of the video is 87.5 centimeters. Uh, so that means from this very left edge, and uh, let me make this a little bit smaller so we can navigate this a little easier, uh, over to the right edge is going to be 87.5 centimeters. Um, and so our first data points are going to be just setting down a set of uh, pixels there, uh, setting, down, uh, setting down a data point so we can determine that distance. Um, so let me scroll back over to the left. Um, and if we look at this, notice that when we uh, put down uh, put down our cursor, then uh, not only can we start moving things around, um, but the coordinate system is set up such that the lower left-hand corner is our origin. That's our zero, zero. Uh, so in fact, I can uh, sort of set a um, set the cursor down here in the corner, and so my x value is zero, and that's going to represent the left edge. And if we scroll on over to the other side, make this a little bit smaller. Uh, if we scroll on over to the other side where we are at the right end of the video uh, and we put down our um, put down a data point, uh, again, we can move that around as well. But if we go and look at uh, look at this value here, you'll notice that uh, it's listed as 1199, which is suspiciously close to the number uh, 1200. Uh, and I suspect that's a nice round number. Um, and then that is the actual number of uh, pixels that we have uh, in this. Or starting from zero, uh, it's going to be 1200 pixels across. And yeah, I can't even move it uh, to the other side. So I would just take that the 87.5 is equal to um, 87.5 is equal to these 1,200 pixels. Um, and so we just divide 87.5 divided by 1,200 to get our answer here. Um, so we'll go through and excel later and do that. Uh, but I wanted to talk more about actually taking your data. So um, let me get rid of these two data points now that I don't really need them. Um, but as we start to look at this video, first we have this frame rate. Uh, and again, it's awkwardly slightly different from 30. So uh, we'll just take it to be 29.97, as they say. Um, and we have 83 frames here where we have this, uh, this cart coming in. It's going to go up the incline and then back again. Now, um, we do not have to take data for every single frame. Uh, each of one of these videos is going to have a slightly different number of frames. Uh, and it can just be really tedious and not necessarily helpful if we take data every single time. Um, we sort of have to see of all of the frames that we have, um, you know, we want to get at least a good 10, if not 20 data points uh, to sort of track this motion so uh, we can adjust sort of how often we take data on every frame. Uh, the other thing we want to do is we need to choose a consistent point on the object that we can always locate and we're always going to pick that point since the object is moving rigidly. So if I go back to the very first frame, notice that uh, essentially almost all of it is out of frame. I don't really have a good, uh, a good characteristic point to get to, but once starting on frame two, I have this uh, sort of corner here. Uh, and let's say I'm going to take that point as my, as the point I'm going to be tracking. And so I'm going to put a cursor there. So that's going to be my first data point. Um, now, if I were to go to my next frame, um, because it's moving fairly fast at the beginning, right, it actually moves uh, quite a distance. And again, we don't necessarily have to, but if we wanted to uh, take data for every single frame, um, that's going to sort of behoove us in the beginning. Um, and again, I'm just going to try and pick this exact same point every time. Now, um, because it's blurry, we're not going to be, be able to sort of exactly pinpoint it every time. 
uh, and that's okay. We can take that into account later when we start talking about the uncertainty. Uh, notice the other thing is that as I start taking these data points, uh, it leaves the previous data points behind. If that starts to get cluttered, we can always go hide previous, um, just because uh, that can, uh, can get in the way. Um, so here I'm going every frame just to, um, just to, as an example in this tutorial, if we have 83 frames, uh, if we went every every five frames instead, then that would give us what about 16 data points, and so that would be good if you went went by five, um, just so you're not sitting here um, going the entire time. So I'm going to go. I think I'm going to only take the first 15. I'll go up to 15. Maybe go up to 16 because then that'll be 15 total since I started at two. Um, so again, uh, my data is being collected down there. Okay, uh, so notice the other thing I didn't do that uh, I should need to do is find the slope of this incline. Um, and uh, we can separately find that if I were to pick two points on here and just find the slope of that line. Uh, however, since this object is moving along the incline, uh, we in fact already have enough data to compute the slope. Uh, we can get that just from our values of X and Y. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this data and Control-C to copy it, and then I'm going to scoot over to Excel. Uh, 